Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over a make table query in, um, in Access. So I've already got a database to start off with, and I'll share this with you in the, uh, in the description of the video. You'll find a link to this particular database at this stage. And it's a relatively simple database. I've got uh, four tables, clients, employees, job logs, and tasks. And if I jump over to Database Tools Relationships, you'll get an overview. The relationships are already established with referential integrity enforced. And you can see that um, Basically, jobs log is the associative entity for this entire grouping here. One client can have many jobs performed. One employee can have can perform many jobs, and then um, multiple tasks can be used. So one task can be used many times, and that's kind of what we're keeping track of here. Let me jump over to the employees table real real quick and kind of show you something. And it's got some pretty standard stuff. And I jumped over to the clients table, so let me go back to employees. Here we go. So we've got their first name and last name. There's a certification level, level one, two, three, or four. We've got their billing rate and we've got their pay rate. And then I've also got a supervisor ID field. And if I kind of scroll down, you'll see that some employees have a supervisor associated with them. Now to be a supervisor at this fictional company you have to be at least a level four. So what I would like to do is I like to create a brand new table of supervisors and these would be all the level, level four employees and that's a pretty easy thing to do if you've got a little bit of query design skill under your belt. So I'm going to jump over to create and I'm going to start off by creating a select query. So let's see I'll do a create and I'll go to query, query design now the table that I need for this particular one is just going to be my employees table. So that's the only table I want to have available to me. And then I'm going to kind of look over and I'm making a select query and I want to bring over all the fields. And there's a couple ways to do that. There's not a lot of fields in this particular table so I could easily just go through and double click on all of them. Not necessarily a bad way to go. But I could also do this. I can just double click this little asterisk. That'll bring over all fields. But I also want to apply a criteria and that criteria is going to be applied specifically to the certification field. So I'm going to bring in that certification field. I'm going to uncheck the show box. The certification field is included with the uh, all fields, so I don't want to have it in there twice. And I'll just show you what happens if I do. Let me go ahead and run this, and you'll see that, yeah, there's my employee uh, certification, but you see how it's given a slightly different name there? And then I've got the field zero over here, and they're actually the same pieces of information. But if I uncheck this, I can still do a criteria for it. For instance, I'm looking specifically for level four employees. And that's the only real big thing I need to do there. Now when I run this query, by the way, I unchecked that show box. So now when I run this query, I'm getting only my level four employees. There seems to be about 75 of them. And there's no extraneous field. And of course, none of my level four employees have a supervisor. So I would like to make a table of just this group. So part one is done just make a select query of the new information I jump back over to design view and now I'm going to switch over to make table and it's going to prompt me what do I want to call this new table well I'm going to call it um, supervisors and it's going to be a part of my current database perfectly fine I'll click OK and now I just have to run this new query it's going to it's telling me here I'm about to paste 75 rows into a new table. I'll click OK. So I now have a supervisors table over here in my objects window. Let me go ahead and uh, I'll close this. It's going to prompt me to save the query, which I will do. And I'll go ahead and call this make query. I'll just say make supervisors table. Click OK. Excellent. So now I have this query saved, but let's see what it's done for me. If I go back to my original employees table, you'll see that I still have all of my employees in there. I have 300 employees, including my level four employees. So they're all still in there. I didn't, I didn't alter in any way my existing employees table. But now I have this supervisors table. And my supervisors table has my 75 level four employees. Now I'm going to do one more little change before we're, before we're done here. Um, let me go back to my relationships window so you can see something. Database tools, relationships. And you'll see that my employees have an employee ID. 
And if I'm referring to a supervisor's employee ID, I'm calling it supervisor ID. It's really the same piece of data though. But I'd like to I'd like to show a relationship between my employees and my supervisors table now. So I'm going to go ahead and close this relationships window. And I'm going to go to my new supervisors table and I'm going to open this up in Design View. Just right click on that, Design View. And I'm going to do a little bit of a change here. Since my supervisors will never have a supervisor themselves, assuming that's a policy at this business, I'm going to get rid of this particular field. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that supervisor ID field. But in my supervisors table, I want the employee ID to be the supervisor ID. So I'm going to go ahead and change this out to supervisor ID and I will also make it a primary key. So now that's the unique field. No two supervisors have the same supervisor ID. It is okay that another table has my employee ID that might be the same though. So now I've got this particular um, unique ID and it doesn't have a dramatic change. I'll save that. Let's look at my uh, supervisors table in data sheet view and you can just see now there's a supervisor ID and this will refer to the supervisor ID in the employees table. So I can go back to my relationships and I want to bring in another table of course so I'm going to show tables I'll bring in my supervisors close and now I can take supervisor ID to supervisor ID from the supervisors table to the employees table. Let go of the mouse enforce referential integrity and create. So now we're showing this one to many because you may not have caught this, but in my table, one supervisor can be a supervisor for more than one employee, for many employees. And that's the way it goes. So now we've used a make table query to make a new table, and we've also updated our relationships to reflect that new related entity.